Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just brought part two of Marriage Matters, a continuing look at surrender and submission. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Ken. Thank you. Okay, so last week, Dan gave it to the men, Got and this it. week yeah. you gave the message to the women. Right. Um, and we did have a question come around, just clarifying one of the points that you made. Okay. Um, so when you talked about Sarah and Abraham, mm -hmm. can you add some clarification to the verse saying that Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord? This sounds like Peter has superimposed Abraham over God, but we know that can't be true right. based on what we've learned about That's submission right. so far. Right, yeah, sure. So what Peter's doing here is alluding to Sarah as an example. It's as if he said, for example, like Sarah did. Well, go back in Genesis and what did Sarah do? Well, there's this uh, verse that he was clearly referencing, Genesis 18, 12, where uh, if you know the story, if you don't, here's the story. Basically, uh, three visitors come along who kind of represent God, who tell Abraham, you're gonna have a baby. Sarah's off in the tent and she overhears this. And it says uh, that she giggled to herself as if to say, are you kidding me? Like, right, we're gonna have babies. He's nearly 100, I'm nearly 90. We're gonna have a baby? And um, the, the context is, in that verse you'll read in 1812, uh, my Lord, my husband, Abram, Abraham, is an old man. And so um, that's the only time we see her refer to him as, we don't see any instance where he, she went around calling him Lord. Um, but only in her own mind and heart was thinking that. But dig into that deeper. What did that even mean, this whole Lord thing? It's not Lord like the Lord Jesus. is like old term for what a, a lady might think today. My man is old. Um, and so she's just referring to him in a respectful way as she was pondering the the, uh, the audacity of this whole thought that these visitors are giving to Abraham that she's over, overhearing. So it's uh, not that uh, Peter is uh, superimposing Abraham over the rest of God's word. And he's just that he's like, like her, she's a really good example of this. Think of all that she went through, all that she did. She's moving now. She's going to be told she's going to have a, a baby. And she, yet she was respectful the whole, the whole way through, even sometimes getting a little ahead of the Lord. And they kind of goofed up, like I said, a few times. But the overarching trajectory of her life uh, was one of faithfulness to the Lord and, and respect to her husband. And I, that's what Peter was driving at. Good. Good clarification there. Okay, the other question came in, um, says that I understand that the husband will be held accountable for leading the family, but that the wife is essential in helping the husband to sure. lead well. Can you elaborate or give us tangible ways that that can look? Sure. Let me do this. I'll tell a story, mm -hmm. but then I'm going to throw it back to you. Sure. Because you are a wife of a guy that many of us know and love around here, not on our staff, but we see them a lot up here anyhow. I was talking with our own Wayne Risher on our staff um, this past week. And after I let him preview the sermon and he gave what I thought was such a nice example of how he and Tammy uh, sort of navigate this. He said, you know, Tammy does this thing when, um, when we're coming to a critical crossroads and maybe not seeing it totally eye to eye, but there's gonna have to, you can't just keep going without a decision. Sh 
she has this way of very winsomely saying, well, you know what my thoughts are, my, my preference or my opinions, or, um, but on this one, I defer to you. And Wayne said, there's something about when she says that, I sit up because I realize, uh-oh, this one's for real. This one matters. And he says, typically, that's when I say, well, back up. So now why do you feel that, you know, he says that just invites me to probe in all the more uh, intentionally, curiously, to make sure that if, if it's on me, I want to make the right call because she's basically saying, okay, I'm going to defer. And I thought, you know, that, that uh, puts into succinct form what I protracted in, in the illustration I told about Suzanne and, and me, but um, I thought that was pretty good. You should jump in. You are a wife and a great one, as well as uh, helping run the church. What's one or two things you do with Justin? Yeah, you know, um, Justin and I have been married 12, 12 years. We've been married 12 years this year. And I would say this is probably one of the areas where we have really had to work out how, sure. how this works. Um, very much Because like, you're very strong. Because I'm... You're very strong. Very, you have a very high capacity. Uh, not that he isn't, but th that you certainly are. Yeah. And so we've had to figure out how how that is going to work well for us in our marriage. Sure. And much sure. like Tammy and Wayne were alluding to, I almost put myself in the category when it comes down to is um, maybe even like assistant or thinker or calendar or planner for us. I'm the one that comes to him and says, hey, babe, this is coming and we're going to need to think about see it. all of these things that are coming. Yeah. And he's like, I haven't even thought about that. Yeah. So then I get him thinking about it yeah. so that we can make a decision That's together. We've also sat down and figured out, okay, you're really good at this, mm. and I'm not. And you're really good at this, and I'm not. That's so out of good. all the things that have to be done, why don't you just take the lead on this, uh -huh. make those decisions? One of the things I can think about um, is where our kids would go to preschool. Uh -huh. He's like, you've toured the schools. You know the kids. You've been staying home with them for a while. I fully trust that you can pick the preschool that's going to work for Great us. Great example. Um, Things like that where we've been able to say, you know what, I think this is an area where you could do this. Yeah, um, and good. then when it comes to big decisions, it's very much an, uh, we need to talk about this, mm -hmm. but defer to mm -hmm. him for the final decision. Yeah. You're a good influencer up mm -hmm. to your good credit. I know because you do that on our staff. And uh, more than once, I've thought as I walk away, huh, that was really good. I don't feel like you knucklehead because you didn't <laughs> think of it, but I realize what you did very graciously sort of say, yeah, maybe think about this. And I'll, then I, I, I see it and realize it. I would add one thing mm -hmm. that I think is helpful in this discussion, and I hope that every couple in the church has this discussion. Um, I think it's important for every couple to do what you described uh, doing with Justin, and that is actually go through the categories of life. The you know the 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 finance category, the the school category, you know all the categories, and sort of assess the home category, home upkeep, and who really has a passion for this, who is good at it. I, I think sometimes couples to their peril. Mm -hmm ascribe to themselves roles because maybe they saw their parents mm -hmm. do it or they think that's the biblical way. And the, the, the Bible doesn't get into that nitty gritty, who should balance the books and do the checkbook. And that is something we can figure out together and we should play to our, our own and to our spouse's greatest strengths so that we sort of divvy up the division of labor in a way that is playing to everybody's strengths, not to everybody's weakness. Mm -hmm. That at least gets us to the 50 yard line. Mm -hmm. um, and the other 50 is work uh, and navigating. And um, But maybe that can be helpful for some people. Good. Well, this 
this series, just understanding, I believe, because submission, wifely submission, can be very misunderstood. Very much. Um, and I think the biggest piece for me is when I begin to understand that my I submit and my submission is based on my submission to God. To God. And that just applies in every, every, category. every category of our life. So this has yeah. been a great... That's good. Mm -hmm. if, if we realize we already belong to Him, we've submitted ourselves to Him, we've died to ourselves already, and you can't kill a dead man. So I'm already dead and raised to life through Christ. So now, whether it's the spouse, whether it's the work, whether it's the government, then I, I, can, I can do that. Mm -hmm. That is the message right there. It is. It is. So thank you for that. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.